but you know, bizarre things happen perhaps with uh, us uh, <laughs> metaphysical people, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, maybe that's a bizarre phenomenon. So, all right. So um, yeah, let's just get this started. Uh, I, I don't, not sure how to fix that thing. So, um, so yeah, so today we are here with uh, Kimura. She is a UFO experiencer and contactee, and uh, she's also been a spiritual what's the appropriate word uh uh like a ex, like a metaphysical healer uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry healer healer he, there we go healer for the past 40 years or so uh, she's a phenomenal person really nice lady that i uh recently met uh in tress blair's uh, echo whispers group and uh such a, a fantastic lady she's uh she has been uh, interviewed by uh, Mr. Grant Cameron numerous times, and she was featured in uh, one of his books. Um, so, so I, so Sky I forgot. Sky Pilot. The Sky Pilot. That's it. Yes, yeah, Sky Pilot. I need to get that book uh, one day for sure um, and to read it. So, uh, yeah, she's very, you know, she's uh, known within the uh, – UFO circle and things like that. Um, I don't know a whole lot of, about UFOs and things like that, but like, you know, in my channel, I want to start learning a lot more about UFO phenomena and things like that. And, uh, you know, um, super, super stoked to be talking to Gene today about the UFO experiences. So, um, so Gene, um, could you briefly tell my audience about your UFO experiences? Well, I'll, I'll tell you about one of them to start. Okay. When when I was in college, I went to college in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm. And this was the winter of 1977 to 78. Mm -hmm. We had 80 below zero weather, 80 mile an hour winds, 26 feet of snow that winter. Mm. You can imagine it was horrible. Yeah. The coldest winter yeah, a lot of food, yeah. I've ever been in. And wow. uh, this particular day, I was at home with my son. My son was four years old and he had a girlfriend. She lived down the street and she called and invited him to come and spend the night. They live two houses away from us. And I said, okay, as long as he, her dad came on the road and met me and we, I handed him over to him. And he, when he got home, then he called me to tell me they were in the house and that they agreed. So that's what we did. And then when I came back to my home, I got a phone call from another friend, Sylvia. She lived in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I was in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. And Sylvia wanted to know about her son, George. He hadn't called her that day, and he lived right next to me. And I told her I've seen him at least four or five times. He's been working on another project down the road because he was a contractor. And I told her he's fine. He's been in and out all day long. Anyway, she asked me to try to contact him and have him call her. And I said I would. And then as we're talking, she makes this sound like <gasps> she takes a deep breath. And I said, Sylvia, what's wrong? And she said, a UFO just landed in our yard. And I said, what? She said, she repeated it. A UFO just landed in our yard. Wow. And she said, it's just sitting there and there's a light on top spinning and all the lights are going around it. And she said, this is just amazing. And they were like on a canyon and right behind them was an electrical line. And she said it was hooking into the electrical line, like pulling energy off of the line. And then she called her husband. His name was also George, George Sr. And asked him to go outdoors 
and to look at the UFO. It was in their yard. And he went out. And after another minute, he came back while well, something came in, but she couldn't see it. And then she made that sound again. And I said, what's wrong now? And she said, someone just walked in the kitchen from the garage, but no one's there. The door opened, then closed, but I don't see anyone. And I said, you better go get George. You know, there might be an invisible ET now in your kitchen. So she went out and into the yard and got George and they came back. They never could see anything in the kitchen, but it was just weird that the door opened and shut by itself. That had never happened before. Now, she was in Erie, PA. I'm in Edinburgh, PA. We're at least 35 to 40 miles apart. Okay. Wow. And the snow is howling. We're having a whiteout. 80 mile an hour winds. You can imagine the sounds going on outdoors. It was so horrible. And I said, you know, call me back, Sylvia, please. So we hung up. I went to my front window in the living room. And in my living room, I had 10 feet of glass windows, huge picture windows all the way across. And I have plants hanging at the top. All, all my window was covered in plants, all kinds of plants. I didn't have curtains up. I had plants. So I went and looked out. And when I looked out, I saw two ETs, small grays. Do you know what small grays look like? I have an idea, yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at them, and then I get this thought, I have to go to bed. That's what came to my mind. Now, normally, if I saw two grays in my yard, I would never think I've got to go to bed right now. That would not be my first thought. So I went to bed. And I went in the bedroom, got ready for bed, gone in bed. And as soon as I was in bed laying down, the grays walked into my bedroom. Wow, that must be scary. <laughs> well, then they froze me. I was frozen. I felt like I was in cement. The only thing I could move were my eyeballs. I could look left and right, up and down. I could move my eyes, but that's the only thing. I couldn't move my arms, legs, hands, anything. And it feels just like you're frozen and you can't move no matter what you try. You cannot move. Anyway, I just laid there thinking, what are they doing? Because I knew they froze me. I've never frozen before. Then the next minute, they're taking me out the wall right behind my head. I have a window, but it's real high. They took me right through the wall and up to their spaceship. Wow. When we got up there, it was like being in a huge area I did not see the outside of the ship. I saw inside. It was all stainless steel. They had a huge stainless steel area. It looked like an operating area. It looked like a huge doctor's office. They laid me on this huge, gigantic table at the edge so they could reach me, of course. And... I had been having migraine headaches for months and they were the kind that you can't do anything. When you get them, you have to turn all the lights out 
and just try to live through it because it's so painful. Anyway, they did something. They took away my headaches. Really? Thought, wow. Yeah, they cured me. And I mean, it wow. happened very quickly. I didn't know what they were doing. I don't remember any surgery, but I know they did something to my, to take it away. They took my wow. headaches. So wow. I realized. Um, so, sorry, go ahead. I realized after that they had healed my headaches. I wow. didn't realize it that day, but the next day I, I never got the migraines again. Wow, that is such a profound story. Um, Jean, so part of the reason why I'm super interested in UFOs right now is because, like, you know, I know there's people out there that do, like, something called the CE5, like, you know, people uh, summon aliens and UFOs and things like that. I'm particularly interested in that. You know, my channel is mainly about people, you know, performing energy work and quote unquote super normal abilities i consider c5 definitely like a super normal ability to be able to summon entities and right. ufos and things like that um is it possible to learn how to summon these things at will um is it and, and, and is it perhaps a uh, skill if you will like is this something that you the more you do you get better at like, i'll tell you what i that? think it is when you come in as a star seed from a planet they track you for life they track oh, you from when you're a child. You start having experiences with them as a child. When you're very young, they keep in contact with you. If you're a star seed, because they watch over you always. Okay. That's my belief. Now, through my lifetime, I could go out and call them to me, and then a UFO would fly over. I've seen many, many, many UFOs. I've had more than one experience with different types of UFOs. This is just one particular experience I'm talking to you about. And then the next day I called Sylvia and we spoke and she wanted me to call the UFO hotline because in Pennsylvania, we had a UFO hotline. And really? tell them I didn't know that existed. Wow. What had happened to me. And, you know, at the time, I didn't know they'd healed my headaches yet. You know, I, I was just excited that, about what had happened, but I didn't realize what they had done. But... Sylvia still wanted me to say that there was, she had one in her yard. I saw the ETs in my yard and we're far apart. We're not close together. You know, 35, 40 miles, that's a long distance. How did they know where I was? And I mean, the whiteout, it's like they did it so they wouldn't be seen. You know what I mean? Nobody could see any UFO, it was a whiteout, a whiteout, you can't see anything except snow. So the UFO committee, okay, now remember, Sylvia had one land in her yard. 200 people from her neighborhood came and stood in their yard for hours watching the UFO that was in their yard, okay? Now, I know she's not making that up. 200 people. How can 200 people see the same thing? And and you know what the UFO committee said? What, what do they say? That was mass hallucination. You're all hallucinating. Yeah, that's a pretty, that's a lot of hallucinating and a lot of quite the coincidence. <laughs> yeah. 200 people? you got to be kidding me. That's the lame excuse you're telling people? That's absurd. And you're going to tell me I hallucinated my experience? I've never gone through a wall. I never thought I could go through a wall. And if I went through a wall, I thought that would hurt or kill me. 
I mean, who ever heard of going through a wall? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, then, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry go I ahead. blocked, they blocked my memory. I could not oh, remember really? okay. any of this. I remembered it right when it happened, and then they blocked it. So then I had years of no memory of what happened oh. to me. <clears throat> and then I moved to California. Mm -hmm. And I met a man, at, and I worked for the Boy Scouts in California. Nice. Okay. And he took me to a movie. If you ever heard of the movie Communion? I, I have not. It's about a UFO experiencer. You've got to get that book. It's an old, old book. You can go to Thrift Books. They'll still have that book. They have thousands and thousands of books. Okay. Anyway, it tells about how these aliens would come to their cabin and do stuff with them. Mm. And I made fun of the movie, and he said, you're an experiencer. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, you have had an experience, and it's blocked. And I said, how do you know? He oh, goes, wow. I just know it. Wow. So he had me go to the psychologist. She uh -huh. regressed me. She oh. did hypnotize. She hypnotized me. Uh -huh. She had me relive the whole experience. Wow. She recorded it. I used to have the recording of everything I told her. But now okay. I can remember it. Because once she brought it back up, then I could remember it. So I told her everything that happened. Then she took me to LA and I met 150 other people that had had a similar experience to me. Mm. They had greys come to their home and take them up on the ship. And I mean, we all got to meet each other, talk to each other. It made us feel normal. When you're in a room of people and you've all had the same experience, you don't feel so bad because you know it's happened to other people. Makes you feel like it's a normal thing that can happen to you. But I believe a lot of people that have experiences today with ETs are from that planet originally, not mm -hmm. now. We've come in, agreed to come in as a human, but we came from another planet first. Mm -hmm. So they still want to stay in contact with us. They stayed in contact with me for many, many, many years. And at night, a lot of times they would come and see me. A lot of times in my dream time, I would go up on a ship and go off with them here or there or everywhere. Um, I lived in Hawaii. I had experiences in Hawaii, in Pennsylvania, in Ohio. Everywhere I've lived, I had experiences with ETs. Interesting. So, so basically, long story short, to my uh, question, um, you know, uh, only certain kind of people can experience this stuff. Like, not everybody can kind of, you know, learn to summon these things. Or, like, what is your take on that? Well, you can you can try. I mean, do you meditate? I meditate a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, in your meditations, ask that they come to you. Ask to connect to the ETs that you're from, you know, where you came from initially, because usually we have four or five planets or more that we're connected to because we've been reincarnated thousands of times in this lifetime. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, before you were incarnated on earth, you were on other planets. And between lifetimes on Earth, 
you can go back to the other planets. Just meditate and ask them to show you who they are. Now, if you go on YouTube, you can track different planets, planetary information, and then get a sense of who you think you might be with. You know, there are maybe four or five that really sort of match your personality because there are very specific types that go with different planets. And the Palladians are all about love. You know, love, love, love. They're trying to spread love everywhere because right now that's what the earth needs the most. And by being in a loving state, we can raise the vibration not only for ourselves, but for others, for other humans. And as we continue to rise up, it lifts us all up. I just got real bright again. Um, remember when Tress was on your show, every time she got excited about something, the Does light. Does that happen to you too? It just did, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very interesting phenomena. That's so cool that you guys, you know, maybe it's a, a, a particular, um, you know. It's when our it's energy, when we're talking about you something that people. makes us energized, you see it. Our light goes up. And that's, that's cool. I that's, all, that's awesome. Yeah, I knew I had to, I had to interview you because you know, th th like you know, the type of stuff you do is the type of people that I generally interview. So very cool that I, that occurred. Um, so yeah, so um, you know, very very cool that you know you have so many cool UFO experiences and things like that. Could you talk to me a little bit more about your um, like general spiritual experiences and things like that? You mentioned that you were a healer. Do you um, yeah? So how did how did you get started as a healer? Can well, you talk to me about that a little bit? I think all my life I was pretty much always praying because I had a very religious grandmother. Okay. She was Greek Catholic. She went to church oh. every day of her life, not oh. Sundays, every day. Mm. She always went to church. She was always praying. She loved praying for people and she was so spiritual. And I'm sure that was a huge influence on me. My other grandmother, I adored her. I was with her all the time. She was more of a mother to me than my mother herself. This was my mother's mother, okay? Her and I were very close. So I'm very closely connected to both of my grandmothers. I adored them both. And that, how you're raised a lot of times as a child, it sticks with you. And I just loved praying for people and holding the light for them. Like even today, when I'm praying for someone, I hold the light and I create a bubble of light around them, like a balloon. And I... I see them encased in it and that's their protection. And as they're healing or they've asked for healing, I keep them in that protective bubble to help reinforce it and to hold it near them, the energy so they can heal. Because sometimes you have surgery or you have a situation, say you fell and broke your foot or your leg or arm or whatever, but I hold them in that healing bubble and that helps them to heal. And, and multiple times a day, I'll pray for someone or a lot of people. A lot of times I'm praying for everyone on earth, on mother earth, on every planet, every star system. Because I'm not um, innocent enough to think that we're the only planet in the world that's got people on it. 
I think all of them probably do. We just haven't figured it out. Some of the planets, people live inside the planet. You know, they go to the planet and they said, well, nobody's here. There's no water. There's no this, no that. Well, they don't know what's in the planet. They only looked at the surface, right? So I pray for everything. And if nobody's there, it doesn't hurt anything. Prayers are good. The more you pray, the more it helps. And right now we need all the prayers we can get. Yeah, certainly. Oh, well, you know, what a wonderful thing that you do pray for everybody on earth and stuff like that. That's so wonderful. Yeah, and um, all the animals. And all the animals. That's so awesome. Yeah. All the people and all the animals. Because if we go to another planet, we don't want to be there alone. We mm -hmm. want our animals. We love animals. We grew up with animals. I don't think people would know how to live without animals. Yeah. I mean, we all love animals. We've grown up with them. As children, that's what we wanted. A dog or a cat or a bird or whatever. Some people like rats. Some like bunnies. Some, you know, there's all kinds of animals. So I pray for both of them because I was told that they're taking the animals now to the next earth. The new earth. They call it the new earth, right? Very cool. Yeah, yeah. That's certainly uh, very exciting to hear. And uh, yeah, you know, thank you for, you know, praying over people and stuff like that. That's so wonderful. Um, yeah. So, um, you know how, you know, so uh, to, to let the audience know, you know, we do like a particular meditation in Tress Players. Uh, group uh, at the end of our conversation and things like that. It's a very wonderful meditation. I participated in it once. Um, Jean, you mentioned that, you know, um, it was, it's, it's, it's important for me to like, you know, part participate in that meditation more. Um, you mentioned that, you know, in that meditation, you get to like, you know, astral projector. Uh, I don't know if that's what you, that that's the appropriate word for it, but uh, of, of some sort, um, you know, could you talk to me about that process a little bit, um, you know, of astral projection uh, by, uh, you know, doing like certain guided meditations and things like that. Um, and perhaps your experiences with that kind of stuff. Well, I started doing it when I was very young in my twenties and I've had a lot of different experiences with it. Uh, you, I would suggest that you just lay down and then close your eyes and travel within yourself and ask to be lifted out. And this is why I keep saying you've got to come to stresses group and have someone work your shift Saturday so you can go with us because she teaches you to do this during that time. <clears throat> and she takes us to her planet and we get to meet the people there and we astral travel. Now I've been doing it for years and years but I don't do it all the time. But when I was in my Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull group, and I did this for three years, and at least twice a month, sometimes three times a month, we would go everywhere. And we, at, we all knew how to astral travel. And then we'd come back and compare our stories and we, we always linked up. I mean, we saw the same things. We had the same type of experiences. We met the same entities. We've met people from every planet. One time we went to Egypt. We went to the bottom of the pyramid. I don't know if you know this. The bottom of the pyramid was almost more important than the top of the pyramid. That's where they had all of their rituals in the oh, bottom. Okay. okay. And the Egyptians were very smart 
and they communicated all the time with the planets above them. That's why you'll see the light shoot out of the top of the pyramid a lot straight into the sky because the stars are above the pyramids and they're still connecting and still getting information from their home planet. And they believed in life after death. And they believed in the continuation of life. So they were very spiritual, the Egyptians. But so were many countries. It isn't just Egyptians. This goes for a lot of the people in the world. Indians, Africans. There's so many countries that had this theory that they're still connected to their home planet. And by staying in communication, you keep the knowledge. See, and I'm getting lit up again. Yeah, very, like I said, very cool that it's happening to you as well. Yeah, um, because yeah. when you're excited, and I'm getting covered with goosebumps now, when you're talking about your truth, your inner truth, and it it connects with you so, so much, your light pops out. And it, But it's coming from your heart, your heart center. Now of all times in the earth, you're, every time you meditate, even when you think about God, concentrate on God and hold God in your heart because God lives within all of us. He lives in our soul and in our heart center. And when you're very excited about God and how you're feeling, it shows. That's why people will walk in the room and other people look at them and go, oh my God, their light is so incredible. Because you see their light shining out because sometimes when you go out in public, you can just turn it on before you enter a room and people can see it. I know that sounds weird, but you can do this yourself. Sit and meditate in front of a mirror. Okay. And draw the light and then try to put it out in front of you and then look at yourself. I'm I'm seeing it because I'm on the screen right here. And so when it happens, I'm like, wow. I mean, I didn't know I could do that. Uh, when I saw a dress, I was surprised to see dress. And every yeah. time she got excited about something, she lit up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I said yeah, but, you what I thought about that video. I was blown away. Yeah, yeah. But hey, you know, like, you, you know, everybody can, uh, do, well, you know, everybody that's like, you know, in, into that type of stuff seems to be able to do that kind of stuff. So very cool. I'm super, super glad I got to interview you too. Um, so Gene, um, so, you know, um, uh, like, what is your ultimate, like goal in this uh in this lifetime um you know where do you think the world's headed to and stuff right now um, i'm not i'm not thinking about where everyone else thinks the world's headed i'm thinking about where i want it to be headed okay could you I elaborate on that a little bit i don't i don't listen to all the bs out there because you'll go mm -hmm. shoot yourself Right. No, that's true. Yeah. They're so negative. They never say anything positive. Hold mm -hmm. it in your mind that we're going to be fine. The world, we're all going to go forward. We're all going to go upward. We're all going to rise. We're all going to be connected to our God self. Keep that in your mind at all times. Do not listen to all the BS out there. Right. You know, on YouTube, half of the stuff is crap. You know, you can click and tell them you don't want to see it anymore. You know that, right? Yeah. On every channel. Yeah. 
So the real negative ones, just get them off of your pages. You don't want that on there because yeah. it drags you down. If you look at it, it makes you sick because they'll, they, they don't want us to connect with our God self. Now, now, who are they? When you say they, who are you referring to? Well, the people in charge. On now, Earth. are they are they bad people in your mind, or like are they just you know people that are greedy? Well, they're perhaps? not good people. They're not good if, people. Okay. If somebody wants you to not connect with your God self, you know they're not good. Mm. They don't want you to know. I'm lighting up again. Your own power, because mm -hmm. when you know your own power, you're not going to fall under their power. Right, right. Right? So they yeah. don't want you to even learn it. Yeah. That's why yeah. they're doing these things. And mm -hmm. then they try to poison your mind. And mm -hmm. that is unfair. Because mm -hmm. we've worked so hard to be God-centered, to be God-connected, mm -hmm. to be in the right space because to me if you're not in your heart helping other people what are you doing here right you know it you you have to stay centered god centered yeah and do what you can walk on the grass hug a tree plant flowers do all the things connect with the earth connect with the trees connect with nature love animals love people mm -hmm. love is the answer to any question that is of any interest yeah because yeah. love is what's going to help us heal but yeah. certain people don't want you to realize the more you connect with love healing god and the positive energy the less they can harm you yeah gene i just want to sit quickly say something you know i am a guy who does like energy work and stuff i do various i study various different traditions and things like that and i try to like you know practice these things and things like that mm -hmm. um but you know sometimes i meet people that can naturally do you know um super normal things and you know, I'm, I'm like, man, like how, how I, I ask people that just naturally can do these things and they always seem to give me a common answer, you know, because I'm looking for like specific techniques and all this kind of like, you know, stuff um, to be able to do certain things. But like the key word, the key common answer that they always seem to give me is like love, just be love. And I feel like, you know, maybe someone like me, you know, it might perhaps tell my audience as well, if you get sometimes a little too caught up in the idea, like, you know, oh, I need to like, you know, you know, find like an ancient lineage and like, I need to, you know, like, you know, study different books and things like that and acquire different skills and things like that. Uh, of course, those things are like, you know, awesome. And they're, they're, they're great. Um, you know, people definitely should do those types of things, but maybe perhaps, um, you know, people should go back to the real fundamental basics and just be a loving person and be a embody love in your life. And, uh, and that's, that unlocks all possibilities. If you do that and unlocks all the other things, that's what you have to do first. Yeah. Stay in your heart center, stay yeah. heart balanced. Yeah. Keep calling your higher self up. You know, you have to know that if someone's sick, they can call you and ask you to help them. Help. A lot of times it's for the whole family. Yeah. Sometimes it's one person. Sometimes it's everybody in their family. So, I mean, and because of COVID, I had thousands, I mean... Through COVID, we help thousands of people. Okay. Nice. Over a three-year period, we helped over 2,000 people. Wow. We only lost two people, to my knowledge, two out of those 2,000, because we had them covered 
with prayers, but we pray as a group. I'm not taking credit for that. I'm just saying we pray as a group. We have a lot of people praying. Prayer is powerful. The more yeah. they pray for you, the better off you'll be. And prayer is so powerful. And people today don't even think about prayer a lot of times. Yeah. Or if you tell them about, well, pray, they'll look at you like, what's that? Yeah. And I know it, it, it'll, if you start meditating and praying to connect to your, your home planet, okay, I don't know which one it would be for you. You, you might know, but you might have two or three planets that you connect with, right? And if you do this, I think something will come up for you. Or you can get, um, have you ever heard of a light star? I have not, no. Okay, I'll send you some information about her. Because okay, she, yeah, certainly I'd love to check that out. Yeah, if you did a meditation or uh, session with her, she might help you figure out who you connect to. She helps other people do that. Very cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah and um, so I'll send you some information about her. Very cool. Okay. And yeah, other yeah. than that, okay. just meditate and hold in yourself that you want to astral travel or come to mm -hmm. Tress's class and she'll have yeah. you doing it that fast. Yeah. And I mean, come on, you can give up one Saturday. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I, I will have to make that happen. That's on my bucket list for sure. So <laughs> I will definitely. Because if you do it, that'll connect you with astral traveling, meditating, the way to meditate to stay in that space. Yeah. And it's very easy. And when we go as a group, you know you're with people. And she watches us all. So yeah. she keeps us in the right space. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to yeah, do it on yourself the first time. You want to be guided. She'll guide yeah. you and she'll watch you. So yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. No, I well, well said. Um, you know, like I said, I really, really feel like sometimes I look for techniques too much. I took look for information too much, but you know, I, I really sometimes need to just ask myself, Hey, quit looking for answers, quit looking for skills, quit looking for masters, gurus and information. Like, you know, look within, look within my heart and really exactly. just, uh, and, and, and you said, and I, I love when, when you said prayer, um, I, from my direct experience, rather than like, you know, doing something like Reiki or, you know, doing like, you know, blasting, like ener projecting energy out of your hands and like connect you know, your chi energy and connecting with, you know, elements and things like that, which that works too. But like, there's a much better way perhaps. And like, you know, from my experience, prayer is actually very underrated. It's prayer is like actually very effective and stuff. Prayer, call, call it affirmation, um, whatever you want to call it, you know, a lot of spiritual techniques can be really simplified just being in pure love and for some people who have like a serious set who have serious trauma who have a lot of like negative experiences in the past and stuff like that i certainly do and i I'm, i feel like you know ultimately like you know the most important thing maybe for me perhaps isn't really to you know look to just do meditation and like and do move you know different like you know ancient type of you know movements and things like that maybe the, the most important thing for me to do is to just embody love and be in love and be in a loving state because i lack that sometimes you know and I, i'm not afraid to admit that and uh um i uh, sometimes i mean i just have a lot of you know 
you know, issues and traumas and things like that from, that I do have from the past. But we and, all do, Ken. Yeah. All yeah, of us. We yeah. came in, we knew what we would be signing up for be, before we came in, and then they wipe our memories. So we don't know why we're here. Mm -hmm. And then we have all these horrible things happen to us. You either become empathic and love people more, or you become psychotic. It's your choice. Yeah, no, no, well, well said. You know, you can be psychotic or you can be love. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm definitely um, kind of a little bit of both, maybe. And I'm not psychotic, but like, you know, there's <laughs> definitely, there's definitely like a, you know, like a, you know, like I said, like a traumatized negative side of me and stuff that I need to heal for sure. And, uh, but see, really that's why you have to go into your heart. You have to learn yeah. to forgive and forgiving yeah. others for how they hurt you sets you free. It's to free yeah. yourself. Most people don't understand forgiveness. They get mad when you tell them, learn to forgive. Then they get upset. They act like you're trying to say what happened to them didn't matter. That isn't the point. The point is you have to forgive so that your heart can heal and you can hold more love. Because your heart can fill with love. Instead of being hurting, you'll be full of love. And that is a much better place to be than hurting. Hurting doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help yeah. you. It doesn't help anyone else. But if you forgive and then bring, keep bringing love into your heart, your heart grows, Ken. Your heart can grow so big that yeah. you can't even imagine. And... I'll tell you another, do we have time for another story? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and tell whatever story you want to share. Well, years ago, I went out with my sister and we used to go dancing in a club in Erie. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went in there one night and we ordered a drink and left it at the bar and then danced because it was okay if you dance with your sister. It wasn't a club where you had to grab a guy and dance we're just dancing and having fun and we came back to the bar and had a sip of our drink and went out and danced some more and then when i came back i told her i don't feel good i something is wrong so we walked around the other side of the bar and i saw my friend debbie she worked at my dentist's office and I asked her if I could go home with her and leave my car there. And I had driven my sister in, but we'd met another friend. So she was going to go home with our friend. And then I went with Debbie and went home with her. But the next day I still didn't feel right. I, I, it was awful. So, but I drove myself home and I, I had recently gotten a divorce and my son was watching our son and I asked him to please take me to my mom's because I wanted to go to my mother's, excuse me. After we, I got in the car and uh, I didn't feel good, so I laid down. And he kept talking to me, telling me I'd be all right, not to worry. And then I died in the car. And the next thing I knew, I was walking with someone. I think it's my spirit guide. <laughs> and we're going down this long tunnel. It's like we're in a cave almost. It's dark over top. But below us are people screaming, help me, help me, and trying to grab my feet. 
And I'm like, what's going on? And, and this man says, don't worry. St stay in the center and watch the light ahead. <coughs> and these people keep trying to grab me. And we go down this long walkway, okay? But the light, the light is drawing me. The light keeps pulling me. The light is like a magnet. It feels magnetized. It feels like it's pulling you forward. And as soon as we walk in this big room and it's huge, the first person I see is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is there. He nods at me and then he steps back and he moves his hand like this. And when I look over, there's God. And God is a thousand suns. They're small, not tiny, but they're all over this wall. Because you cannot, you are not allowed to look at God. I don't know if you know that. But you, no one can look at God at, and see God. But for me, he was a thousand suns. Wow. What and a the light voice. was incredible. And even as I walked into the room, every time I took a step forward, I could feel my heart expanding. <laughs> By the time I got in there, my heart was wider than my hands out. I mean, I felt my heart out here, not here, out here. And I was so mesmerized by God that I walked right over and sat in front and just stared at him. And they let me. I sat and stared at God for I don't know how long I was there. But when I did get up, they asked me if I wanted a tour of heaven. And I said, of course. So they took me to the gates of heaven. All of my family members that had just died before that came we got to hug and laugh and talk. And then I got asked if I wanted a tour of inside. And I said, of course. And then he explained, when you're here, you can go to college. You can go to school. And I said, really? He took me in all these classrooms and they're ginormous. And people are in there in class studying. You can study any subject you want to learn. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was fabulous because I was in college and I thought this will be so cool to go to school and to learn whenever you want to learn. That's incredible. And then when we came out of the school, he said, I'm very sorry but you have to go back. And I said, go back where? He said, go back to earth. And I said, I don't want to go back. And he said, I'm sorry, but your mission is not complete. And boom, I was back. Wow. What a profound story. I was back in the car with my ex-husband. And then we pulled in my mother's driveway. He got out. He went in and they called the ambulance. The ambulance came and took me into the hospital. Now, that was about an hour to the hospital. It's about 50 miles. And at the hospital, they couldn't figure out what had happened to me. Okay. And that really made me upset because they should have figured it out. And then they took me home to my mom's. She let me sleep on her sofa. I slept for 72 hours. She'd wake me up every day to eat dinner and go to the bathroom. And as soon as I was done, I'd go back to sleep. So after 72 hours... When I woke up, I said, 
did they do blood work at the hospital? And she didn't know. So I called my nurse at the doctor's office and asked, can you do the blood work? I think I was drugged at the bar, the drink. I think somebody put something in it. And she said, it's too late now. I never knew what happened. But I got to meet Jesus and God. I mean, I've been telling this story for years. And this happened uh, many, many years ago. Wow. 1973. Wow. What a profound story. Yeah, yeah. That's an incredible near-death experience. Um, yeah, that's one hell of a story. And uh and really, to really, see God and Jesus, and people laugh at me and say, how do you know it was Jesus? I said, hello. <laughs> Who else would it be? I mean, no one could make this up. I mean, yeah. you're walking down a tunnel and there's a light at the end and people crying at your feet. I mean, to me, that uh, what else would it be? I've never heard of anything else that would even come close to what it would be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, sounds People don't want to hear spiritual events that really yeah. happen. And I mean, I'm still talking about it today, Ken. I yeah, talk about yeah. People. people need to know more about God and life. And there isn't anything called death. When you die, it's like walking from this room into the next room because you are never alone. God gives you a guide. Your guide yeah. is with, I'm lighting up again. Your guide yeah. is with you when you're on the other side. You're never alone. So you don't feel alone. You feel protected. You feel loved because you are loved. Yeah. God yeah. takes care of us. Yeah. In such a profound way. And most people don't even expect it or believe it. But it's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well said, Gene. Well, Gene, it looks like we're approaching the one hour mark right now. I think. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing so many wonderful stories. I mean, really, the, the stuff about prayer and the love hit me super How The UFO stories were phenomenal. The near-death the near experience and meeting God and things like that uh, was a huge, huge eye-opener for me as well. I'm just such a... I had such a wonderful time within this hour. Um, is there any final thoughts that you would like to share to the audience? Just stay heart-centered. Work on your heart. Work on making your heart bigger so that it can hold more love. The more you love, the more you can love. Exercise your heart muscle. That's what we need to do by loving more. Yeah. If, oh if you God, like that, animals. Sorry, that. That, that hit me so hard when he said exercise love. I was like, oh, my God, that's something I'm seriously like. And that, that hit me hard, really hard. If you, if you love animals, get a pet. If you love people, let them know it. Call them up. Talk more to people. Start a little group of people you can connect to. So that you're having a personal interaction. It matters, Ken. It matters today. Yeah. And I think that when you ask me, are they bad people? You keep saying they. Well, you'll know a good person from a not so good person. You'll know. Because you'll know their intentions. Their intentions. Are they loving? Are they kind? Do they help people? Do they think of others? I mean, it's the basics. We need basics 
we need to go back to the beginning and start with love and let yeah. love lead the way yeah. because the world needs love today more than ever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So well said. Um, like once again, thank you so much uh, for for your time. Um, so what what was what was the book again? Sky uh, Pilots. Sky Pilot, yes, yeah, Sky Pilot. Um, is Grant the book uh, that she's featured in by by Mr. Grant by Mr. Grant Cameron. Um, and uh, um. And uh, I will put also, um, I guess the appropriate uh, social media link to put will be Echo Whispers because you're an active uh, member of that group. Yes. So uh, I will leave uh, Tress Blair's uh, at, at, uh, at, uh, Echo Whispers uh, Facebook group in the link. And um, yeah, I will I will take care of that uh, you know, later and I'll put the link. So yes, once again, thank you so much for your time, Gene. This was such a wonderful time and uh, um, yeah, I, I I was truly uh, blown away by some of the things you said. I I just and some of the things you said really really hit me hard, and uh, I kind of realized like the things that I was lacking in my life and things like that. I really learned a ton um, within this last hour. So thank you so much, Gene. You're welcome, Ken. Have a good evening. 